Alright guys, I am back with another weekly manga review video. This week we got all three chapters, Naruto, Bleach, and One Piece. And I enjoyed pretty much everything from this week's chapters. Um, starting with Naruto, chapter 610, Jubi. Um, the one thing I didn't like about this week's chapter of Naruto was Kurama powering up Guy, Kakashi, and Naruto. Like it was nothing. I didn't really think that was necessary because the other shinobi should be arriving any time now, surely. And I would like to see them get a little bit of panel time instead of just Kakashi, Naruto, and Guy continuing this battle. I mean, Guy... I'm kind of torn because I would like to see Guy power up and open the eight gates. Because if there's ever a time to do that, it's now. But then again, that's going to kill him and I just don't see Kishimoto killing him off. There's going to be some way he survives because he hasn't killed off any of the heroes so far in this entire war. So, I don't know. I just thought kind of powering them up like that, I didn't really care for. But the Jubis attacking them, Obito actually tells Madara he wants to start the Moon's Eye plan. And Madara wants to eliminate Naruto and the others first because he thinks they're going to get in the way and it's a genjutsu that takes a lot of time to prepare. So, I did... I don't know, I kind of see Madara, once he does do the Moon's Eye plan, it's not going to be exactly what he's told Obito it is. And once Obito sees that, they're going to start fighting or something like that, I think. Um, but anyways, the Jubi attacks, and Karama and Killer B try to shoot these all these Biju Damas at it. And it shoots out this gigantic beam that just blasts them out of the way. Uh, they can't even touch this thing, it's so powerful. Um, but what does happen is Kakashi somehow, using that vortex that Madara has, I guess because he's been powered up, or not Madara, but Obito has, because he's been powered up, he has his Sharingan activated, and he absorbs all of Killer B. So they think that the Jubi took him out, because there's a tentacle left. But really, Kakashi and Naruto jump down from the air, it's a surprise attack, and Kakashi releases the eight tails, the entire thing, out of his eye. And it blasts the Jubi, or it's about to blast it with a Biju Dama. So that's where the chapter left off. So next week they're going to continue the fight, obviously. But that was kind of that was kind of a stretch, because that is an insane amount of focus it would take to absorb the entire eight tails into his eye and put it in that dimension. I mean, would that thing even fit in the dimension? So I don't know, that was kind of strange, but I did enjoy the action of this week's chapter. and I thought it was pretty entertaining stuff. I'm not really a fan of the Ten Tails giant monsters fighting each other. I don't really care much for that. Summons, I don't mind. But yeah, when it's down to like the gigantic Juby with Madara and Obito sitting on top of it, and they're very small, I'm not really big on the big monsters fighting. But anyways... On to Bleach, chapter 517, Stairway to Heaven. This week's chapter was pretty good because it introduces the personalities of the Zero Division and how they all act. And apparently they're here because they want to take Ichigo to the Soul Palace. So they're preparing to take him with them, along with Bayakuya, Renji, and Rukia. I didn't say anything about Kenpachi, <laughs> so I guess he's on his own. And the reason they're going to take those guys is because they're going to die if they're left in Soul Society. Anunohana doesn't want them to leave, but one of the Zero Division members tells her that if she was better at her job and able to heal them, they would have no problems leaving them with her. So they really just put down the 13 squads and act superior to them. The one guy with the beard is definitely the leader. He's the strongest. Uh, so he seems like a really cool character. But yeah, they really just put them down. Um, Sofan actually says, Why didn't you guys come when we were being attacked and we needed your help? And I think it was... I can't remember his name. I don't even know if they gave us his name. But the guy with the big pompadour says that you guys protect Soul Society. We protect the Soul Palace. If you did your job, you wouldn't have been destroyed so easily. And I thought that was a pretty good point, actually. <laughs> uh, 
But they end up taking Ichigo and the others with them to the Soul Palace. So next week's chapter should be really interesting if we finally get to see the Soul Palace, possibly the Soul King. It's going to be crazy stuff. I mean, this is definitely climax material here towards the end of a series, if this truly is the last arc in Bleach. Um, so I did enjoy that chapter. I'm trying to think if there was any other... Oh yeah, there was something else. They're also going to take Ichigo's sword with them. So I guess they can fix that and get him back in good shape. And as they're on their way out, the person from Huek Mundo shows up. It doesn't show us who it is. They're just talking. I'm not sure it's... The text looked like Urahara to me. Like something he would say. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's just him, but why not just show us that it's him at the end? So it could be a surprise person. But anyways, that's how the chapter left off. I did enjoy it. On to One Piece, chapter 689. Um, island which doesn't seem to exist. And the cover story is Karabo. Last week he was shipwrecked, or I think One Piece was on break last week. So the week before he was being shipwrecked, he was in a storm. And this week he arrives on a strange island. Now, as far as the actual chapter of One Piece goes, I thought it was very good. Some major surprises here. And it starts off with Brownbeard. He confronts Caesar. And he tries to tell the other soldiers not to listen to Caesar. Where are my men? I want my men, Caesar. Stop playing us all. And Caesar acts like he's concerned for his men, but we know Caesar had his men killed. He didn't let them in, so they were killed by the poison gas. And Brownbeard's trying to tell the others that they're being used as guinea pigs, but Caesar injects him with a muscle relaxer so he can't talk, he can't stand, and then Caesar whispers to him that he really did have his men killed, that he started the explosion two years ago. Brownbeard gets up in a rage, the men start shooting at him, thinking he's going crazy, and it was all just another way to make Caesar look like a bigger villain, like he needs it at this point. I mean, he's probably one of, if not the most, evil character we've seen in One Piece so far, just based on his actions alone and how he completely has no regard for anyone else but himself and just doing these crazy experiments on people. So he tries to finish off Brownbeard, and Luffy shows up, uses Gear 3 to bust through with Hockey and hit Caesar. Caesar gets up, he talks to Luffy a little bit and tells him, you have no idea what you're doing, I'm protected, this island is protected by people like Virgo and Don Quixote do Flamingo and because of these guys I can do whatever I want here and nobody can stop me and you have no idea who you're messing with if you mess with me these guys are gonna come down on you hard and Luffy's just listening to all of this and he explains that Luffy's not strong enough to face guys like Don Quixote and Virgo and he says that the only reason Law is after him trying to kidnap him is because he knows he's the only one who can make the SAD, which apparently is a man-made devil fruit of the Zoan type, the type that can turn you into an animal. And he can make these. And there's a Yonkau member, one of the four emperors, who has bought a lot of these fruits and has an army of hundreds of Zoan type users. So pretty much his entire crew is going to be Zoan types, which makes him incredibly powerful. I would think it's Big Mom, just because of what happened in Fishman Island, and it's kind of like Luffy's going to be going after her next, it feels like, and because Pecoms did turn into a turtle. So if I had to pick one of the four emperors who is the one using these Zoan type fruits, I would think it was Big Mom. But he tells Luffy this, and Luffy doesn't care. He punches Caesar in the face with hockey, and says, I've been after guys like that from the start. So a really good chapter, a huge reveal, finding out that uh, the SAD makes devil fruits, and someone out there, Don Quixote probably has a lot of Zoan types in his crew because of the fruits, and one of the four emperors is using a lot of these. So that's going to be awesome to see an entire crew of just different animal types. Um, but the downside of that is if the Straw Hats get so powerful they're able to take out these people like it's nothing. Because I would really like to see the major fruits get at least two chapters of fight. Like a person who has a gorilla fruit or a rhino fruit or something like that. I would like to see be a major player in the manga. 
Uh, but anyways, that was One Piece this week. Great chapter. And overall, I enjoyed all three chapters this week. So that's my review of this week's Weekly Shonen Jump Manga Chapters. Hope you guys liked this video. Leave your thoughts on this week's chapters in the comments. And thanks for watching. Bye. Alright guys, I am back with another weekly manga review video. This week we got all three chapters, Naruto, Bleach, and One Piece. And I enjoyed pretty much everything from this week's chapters. Um, starting with Naruto, chapter 610, Jubi. Um, the one thing I didn't like about this week's chapter of Naruto was Kurama powering up. I'd like to see Guy power up and open the eight gates. Because if there's ever a time to do that, it's now. But then again, that's going to kill him. And I just don't see Kishimoto killing him off. There's going to be some way he survives. Because he hasn't killed off any of the heroes so far in this entire war. So, I don't know. I just thought kind of powering them up like that, I didn't really care for. But the Jubis attacking them. Obito actually tells Madara he wants to start the Moon's Eye plan. And Madara wants to eliminate Naruto and the others first. Because he thinks they're going to get in the way. And it's a genjutsu that takes a lot of time to prepare. So, I did... I don't know, I kind of see Madara, once he does do the Moon's Eye plan, it's not going to be Guy, Kakashi, and Naruto. Like it was nothing. I didn't really think that was necessary, because the other Shinobi should be arriving any time now, surely. And I would like to see them get a little bit of panel time, instead of just Kakashi, Naruto, and Guy continuing this battle. I mean, Guy... I'm kind of torn because I will see exactly what he's told Obito it is. And once Obito sees that, they're going to start fighting or something like that, I think. Um, but anyways, the Jubi attacks. And Karama and Killer B try to shoot these all these Bijudamas at it. And it shoots out this gigantic beam that just...